What's up? It's Bax, and I'm very happy right now because yesterday Electron released a new OS update for the Octatrack Mark 1. And included in this update was the long awaited, some thought it would never come, trig conditions. I think until the point where they announced that the Mark II OS would be made available for the Mark I, people had just accepted that we wouldn't be getting trig conditions on the Octatrack, and they found workarounds which are good, but to have the trig conditions is just such a treat because no one saw it coming until it was announced, and almost every user really wanted them. I don't think too many people would have resented Electron had they not made the Mark II OS available for the Mark I, simply because people understand they run a business, they have to be profitable, and they have to entice people who own the Mark I to upgrade to the Mark II. And by keeping the trig conditions function exclusive to the Mark II, they certainly would have sold a few more units. But it's just an incredible act of goodwill by Electron to make this functionality available for the Mark I. It's a very generous gesture that they're making towards an already insanely loyal fan base. And Electron, thank you. This is awesome. I've been using them and they're really fun. They're going to add a lot to your arrangements. For those of you who haven't yet updated to the new OS, take less than two minutes of your time and update because you're going to gain a lot from it. Since a lot of us are new to trig conditions, I'm going to show you a couple of examples and just broach the subject because I get the feeling that I'm going to be constantly discovering new ways to use these and that's why I'm so excited about trig conditions because it's making an already very versatile machine that much better. So enough talking, let's see how we can use trig conditions to better our arrangements. All right, first we'll be looking at probability conditions. This means there's an X percent chance that something will happen. We'll be using them in conjunction with MIDI control change messages, which alter various parameters on your synth. On track 1, I've laid down a basic MIDI pattern that is triggering my Korg MS-2000. Let's listen. You can hear it's a static pattern that's repeating over and over. It's laid out on one 16 trig page. Let's copy this MIDI track and paste it to track 2. I'll clear the trigs and give us a clean slate and then I'll make the scale set up 32 meaning it's twice as long as track 1 now we're gonna lay down some trigless trigs that will alter the synths cutoff and the trigs will have a probability condition assigned to them so on track 1 I'll lay down a trigless trig CC4, I think. C okay, CC4 controls cutoff, and I'll leave the default setting low. Then on this first trig, I'll press the left or right arrow, and that's how you access the micro timing menu, and that lets you access the trick conditions. I'll set a 25% chance that this trig will go off and I'll parameter lock a setting that will fully open the cutoff. So there's now a 1 in 4 chance, and you just heard it, that the cutoff will go off. Or at least the cutoff will be maxed out. But once it's open, it won't close unless I were to turn the knob. So on page two, let's just copy this. I'll paste that and it's another 25% probability trig condition, except for this one, I'll do that the cutoff closes. 
and you just heard it go off. So now we have a 25% chance that the first trig will open the cutoff and the second one will close it. And if you start thinking, what if we were to lay these all over, you can hear in your head the implications of the cutoff opening and closing at random and how cool that can be. Let's just copy and paste some of these all over the place. So there's a fully open probability condition, another fully open, another fully open, fully open. And now let's lay down some fully closed ones. We're already getting a lot of variation and we're only altering one MIDI control change and we're only doing it in two ways, meaning fully open or fully closed. We could even lay down a couple of random notes instead of trigless trigs. Let's have these be really high notes and we'll give this a 50% chance of happening. Okay, a bit dissonant, doesn't really sound good, but... Oh, it's because I have two notes laid down. Oh, that sounds all right. So you can hear that even before we laid that note down, with just trigless trigs and probability conditions, we were getting a lot of variation. Again, we we're only using one control change. Let's add another just to get some more variation. Um, okay, I think 24 is decay, which is CC7. Okay, that could be interesting. We'll leave that at the default setting. And... Let's turn this down. We'll use the, the trigless trigs that we already have laid down. Okay, hopefully you're getting the conceptual aspect of it because this example might not sound great, but you can hear that there is a lot of variation if I were to able to program this for a few more minutes and focus on what aspects of the synth patch really need to be altered. I usually like to mess with decay times, release times, cutoff, resonance, if you're setting up a bunch of trigless trigs with probability conditions assigned to them for synth parameters that are going to really affect the dynamics of the patch, then the results you get using this trick are going to be really interesting. Even still, let's listen without the trig conditions. And that's a cool trick in and of itself, just muting your trig conditions track and unmuting it.
that's a good way that you can freeze whatever condition has taken place. Like right there, a trig condition lowered the decay. It sounds like it lowered the cutoff. And by turning off the trig conditions page or track, I'm able to lock that in. Then I go back to it. The trig conditions begin taking place again. I muted it one more time and you can hear I'm now frozen in this mode. So you can sort of just use it as an instrument. And that's really fun. Oh yeah, that's very usable. So that's a great trick. Let's look at something else. Okay, for the second example of using trig conditions, I'll show you how to play two patterns on one track using fill and not fill conditions. Let's lay down our first pattern. Um, Okay, that's fine for pattern one. For pattern two, we'll do just a basic four to the floor pattern. So for trigs that are going to be common to both patterns, meaning since this will be four on the floor, one and 13, we'll leave those as they are. For trigs that are going to be common only to the first pattern, which in this case would be 3, 7, and 11, we'll assign a not fill condition. That's the fill with a line over it. So 3, and I could just copy that over to 7 and 11. If I press the arrow, you can see 7 and 11 now have that trick condition as well. And for trigs that are going to be common only to pattern two, meaning five and nine, we'll do the fill condition. Copy that over to nine. So now I have two patterns laid down, but you're only hearing the first one. Boom, 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 boom. If I'm to engage the fill function, which you do by pressing the down arrow and the scale setup button, the next pattern will do fill, which is my four to the floor. And then it goes right back to pattern one. So one more time, next loop. Very useful, very cool. If you do down and then up, and then the scale setup button, it's gonna latch the fill, which means it will keep it on until I press up and scale setup. And then we're right back. So you can see how powerful that is. And we're only using one of the trig conditions. We're getting two patterns on one track without using different pattern pages. That's very powerful. It really expands everyone's Octatrack. Okay, we can add even more variation using trig conditions by going to track two, which is just another kick drum. And let's, for this trig, assign a probability condition, 50%. And then on this trig, we'll do pre, which means if the 50% condition occurs, then this one will. It really means if the previous trig condition occurs, then the following one will, the one with pre. If it doesn't, then this trig condition will not occur. Didn't occur, didn't occur, didn't again. And there it goes. There it goes again. We'll do the fill. I'm 
I'm keeping things really simple with this pattern, but hopefully you can just begin to conceptualize how powerful trig conditions are. Simply having the ability to put two patterns on the same track expands the octatrack greatly. Trig conditions are going to make your arrangements more interesting. They're going to give you more flexibility with each project. And they're simply just fun to use because there's a degree of randomness to them that is exciting because you never know what you're going to get. Well, I hope this served as a decent enough introduction into using trig conditions on the Octatrack. I hope it got you thinking with the possibilities, the potential, and that you'll go explore it on your own because you really can spend hours and hours and hours looking into different ways to use these. Massive thank you to Electron. Very badass, selfless move from a corporation. Completely unnecessary, but still... I know you've built some brand loyalty in this customer, so I'm very happy. Thanks to everyone else. Download the new OS and start making music. Have fun with these, and I'll see you all next time.